we have been brought up to think that, you know, making sacrifices for others, for a good cause, for this, that, and the other, uh, is a good thing. One needs to look at etymology. The whole first section of the book is about words and the way we use a number of words without knowing where they come from. And consequently, we are misleading ourselves and we're actually feeding, feeding into the word spell that has been given to us by the high priests of the gods. So, sacrifice is basically from sacrum facere, to make separate. Okay, the fundamental distinction here is what is separate from the, what is called the profane, you know, that is part of the, or let's say the ordinary world. So what is to be made separate is the sacrificial offerings that will be given to the God, or it is the land that is to be made sacred as the place for a temple. Now, this goes back to very ancient times, and it is known uh, that in very ancient times, the forms of sacrifice to the gods of ancient Mesopotamia and to Yahweh also, as per the ancient testament, they had a particular fondness for human sacrifice of very, very young infants. They needed this for, don't need to go into the details why, but basically it's food for the gods. I think it's fine to go go into the details. My podcast is is not fluffy people. If they are subscribers to my podcast, they're truth seekers. I want to know the truth. I want to hear, uh, spare us nothing. I want to hear your wisdom. To be able to put together the pieces of the puzzle, I've, I've been leaning on people who are deep specialists in different topics. So I've already mentioned Pierre Sabat for esoteric etymology in the, you know, God language, God languages of the past. Um, there is a, a school of dissenting thought in Italy based around a man called uh, Mauro uh, Bigli, Biglino, who is a specialist in Hebrew. He was doing official translations of ancient Hebrew texts for you know, uh, official Catholic publication, he started wanting to say in his translations what the texts were really saying in Hebrew. And so he came out of that closet, basically, and he started publishing books to the effect that actually the ancient Testament nowhere uses the word God and uh, shows that Yahweh is basically an extraterrestrial warlord who uh, lords it over his, you know, the, the, the clan and the piece of Terry that he's been allocated amongst the other Elohim who are a, a bunch of overlords, probably a continuation of the Anunnaki, and, and you know, that he requires these sacrifices. And he goes into fastidious detail. I mean, really fastidious. It's not like, you know, okay, you know, make a sacrifice to me so that I can give you my bounty. That was not it. They were ordered to go to war constantly and to basically kill off um, cousin branches of their same um, primordial, you know, um, ethnic family. Uh, and at the same time, the newborn, newborn males aged eight days were to be given to him in sacrifice. And he gave these very, very uh, uh, fastidiously detailed specifications about the length, the height, the width of the pyre, you know, the pile of wood where these things would be burned, the order in which things would be burned. And, um, and the stipulation that these offerings had to be fully burnt, which is the actual meaning of the word holocaust. 
Holocaust, burn, hollow, complete, total, full, whole. Holocaust is the full burning of sacrificial offerings. And so, uh, so Bellino lays this out, you know, black on white, in literal translations from the Hebrew, without the spiritualization that came later on. So that's an elucidation of sacrifice. This is the origin of what would later on become the Christian religion. If you look at those facts as bare facts, uh, well, sacrifice doesn't look too good. And it is a word that has later on been naturalized into our vocabulary as being a good thing that we should do, you know, for others, for the gods, for this, that, and the other. So this gives you a different perspective. 